<laughs> Are we stressed about that noise? I wish that I was a better tattoo artist for you. <laughs> oh my god, like... what? <laughs> So these last couple of days of quarantine, I've had this craving to do something permanent and radical, something that could have a long lasting effect on my career, something that I could wake up in 10 years in a cold sweat filled with misery and regret. And I thought, Zach, what are you talking about? You don't want to have a kid right now. So I decided to go with the more, you know, responsible, reasonable, and relatively low stakes thing for somebody at the age of 25 to do. I uh, get another tattoo. And my friend Taylor, you remember Taylor. Hi, I'm Taylor McNutt, and I'm the official spokeswoman for Zachary Stone. She has a tattoo gun, so I'm pretty sure she could give me one. There's no note inside. Did I accidentally buy donuts? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm so good. I seem to remember you saying that you owned a tattoo gun. I do. So, uh, do you want to give me a tattoo by chance? I, I do. <laughs> I've only given one tattoo so far. But I mean, you're probably like good enough, right? Can you, can you send me a picture yeah. so I can practice? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I know what you're probably thinking. Zach, are you a mm -hmm. fucking idiot? Yes. Next question. Why would you want something permanent on your body? Why would you want something bad on your body forever? Not bad, imperfect. And in a lot of ways, that's the whole point. Let me explain. Our culture is sort of obsessed with perfection, with higher resolutions, with immaculate skin, with that perfectly symmetrical Chad jawline. But that's not the case everywhere. Enter. Now look. There's already way too many videos of white people explaining the Japanese worldview of Wabi Sabi. So I'm just gonna like briefly explain my perspective of it. Wabi Sabi is the Japanese worldview that finds beauty and meaning in imperfection and impermanence. And you know, things that uh, we in the West sort of push off as not desirable. Sort of like why I like vinyl records. It's why a lot of people like vinyl records or film. It's that Obviously, it's not as good as a digital master. It's never gonna be that good, but it has, you know, that sound, that cr the cracks and the static, something that you don't get in a digital mastering. And it's something that's sort of being used in like lo-fi hip hop and stuff like that to sort of give it that texture, that imperfect quality. And that, you know, is sort of wabi-sabi. And so getting a tattoo by a friend in their living room, it's not really about getting a perfect tattoo. It's more about the experience you know, that sort of imperfection is a part of the journey. You know, it's, it's like poetic or whatever. So the next question you must ask yourself, dear viewer, if you're one of those people that decides to get a tattoo before they've thought about what they want to get a tattoo of, is what the frick frack patty whack you want to get a tattoo of? What design do I want? Where do I want it? What do I want it to say about me? What is my style? What is my style? When you have a bachelor in fine arts and you make weed killer commercials for a living, these are very dangerous questions to ask. Fortunately, I already know what tattoo I want to get. I've actually wanted to get it for a long time, ever since I got the thigh apple. But the tattoo artist said that he wouldn't give me a finger tattoo because they don't give finger tattoos to people that don't have full sleeves already. And I was like, oh, that's weird and gatekeepy. So now I'm just gonna get it from some amateur in their living room. I'm sure there's like an allegory there or something. So I'm gonna be getting a flower from Shel Silverstein's The Thinker of Tender Thoughts. And this poem, this drawing, is sort of meaningful to a lot of people, obviously, but I think everyone interprets it as, you know, this person conforming to the no flower world or whatever. But my interpretation is that, yeah, well, yes, they do conform by cutting off all their hairs because they're being laughed at. They do keep one on their lapel, which I think is really sort of beautiful. They're keeping a part of themselves while also, you know, making it in the world. We'll see. We'll see what Taylor can do or can't do. That's the adventure. Let's, uh, through the power of movie magic, head on over there. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous, more so about making a video about it, like filming the process with Taylor, than I am about actually getting the tattoo, because I don't really film around other people that often, and I'm very self-conscious about it for some reason. So this is me stepping out of my comfort zone to make a video. We're running into some problems. 
and that's that I can't find the tattooing. Um, I have the gun ready to go. I'm ready to go. The table's ready to go. Um, but I am missing a very important part, like I said, the ink. But we might have to postpone the tattooing to tomorrow or Monday. Um, or if I find it just later tonight. Just wanted to give you a heads up. All right, so after Taylor went to two different ink places today to find some, she finally found some. I'm going over now to do it. Just slightly behind schedule. Like where do you want to st to start? Like down here and go up here? No, maybe just like... Just right here? Yeah. Okay. Whatever it is. Like right here? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like why am I even scared to do this part? Step up. I feel like I should be more confident in anyway. it. <laughs> okay. I can do it. Yeah. Bless you. <laughs> it's looking so bad, Zach. I'm so okay. sorry. You like it just like I that? I like it just like that. Okay, let me get another picture now <laughs> that we have a final product. So, it's been about two weeks since I got my living room tattoo, and it's more or less completely healed. Uh, and, you know, it's, it is exactly the way that I imagined it to be. Uh, Anyways, I talked to Taylor yesterday, FaceTimed her, and uh, we talked about it a little bit. Looking back on it, how do you think you did? I think I did an okay job. <laughs> I think it was a learning experience. Um, fingers are hard, and tattooing is hard. <laughs> I, I really have a lot of faith that once it's healed, it'll be thinner and yeah, cuter. I think it was a, a successful... <laughs> And you don't regret your decision. I don't regret it. You're not mad at me. No. You love me just the yep, same. Yeah, just the same. Yep. I okay. I think maybe a little more. A little more. A okay. little more. Yeah, we'll say okay. a little more. You know, I'm happy with it, and with each passing day, I become more adjusted to having it. And you know, it's all on my finger, so it's gonna, you know, fade you know, aggressively. So, but yeah, this was a fun little adventure, fun little experience. Am I going to do it again? Sure, maybe. Am I going to go get a real tattoo? Yes. <laughs> Oh, well, that's fun. And that's the video. Thanks for uh, watching. We're going to return to some nerd shit on the next one, but just wanted to take you on a little bit of Zach Stoner adventure.